Okay guys, welcome to this video looking at simplifying algebraic fractions. Yeah, so simplifying algebraic fractions here for the numerator and the denominator. Okay, this is appropriate. So the first section, so the first maybe like yeah, three or four questions might be appropriate for the end of the foundation tier. And then I'd say from here... Yeah, Question seven onward is higher tier only. Yes, so if you're doing foundation, then just tune in for like the first three, four, even five questions here, and then you yeah, tune out of it after question six, I would say. Okay, and then for higher tier, please obviously tune in for obviously all. Okay, as ever, guys, please feel free to obviously pause the video as we go along, guys. Yeah, and obviously try and, and attempt all the questions or the ones you, you feel comfortable with doing first, okay, and then come back and press play and check your answer and answers with me, okay, yeah, and, and obviously tick it, okay, let me know in the comment section, yeah, how many you got out of 20, I believe, yeah, and obviously listen to my reasoning as to how I get my answer. This question number one, simplify 2x all over x squared, well, I can divide top and bottom by x, so it goes to 2 over x and the reason for that is is because if I, if I think about it here so 2x over x squared means on the top i have 2 times x and then on the bottom i have x times x now x is common in both okay i must have a product okay of that number or that term for me to actually simplify okay it, it, it can't be 2 plus x all over x especially because yeah because that i can't actually simplify that it has to be yeah some sort of product okay to simplify so divide top and bottom by x so i get 2 over x this next one simplify 49 x cubed all over 14 x squared well if i divide top and bottom by 7 because 7 is the highest common factor between 49 and, and 40 uh yeah, 14, so that'd be 7 over 2, okay, and then I've got x cubed divided by x squared, well, I'm going to subtract the powers, I've got the same base, so I'm going to have x to the power of 1, or just x, okay, like that, okay, or I can just write it as 7 halves x, or 7x over 2, okay, either way would suffice and be appropriate for the examiner, okay, so hopefully it makes sense, guys. Okay, question number three, simplify this expression. So 18 divided by 3 is going to be 6. X, so x to the 1 divided by x squared. Well, I'm going to do 1 subtract 2, so that'll be minus 1. So it's 6x to the minus 1. Y divided by y is equal to 1. Yeah, so the answer is going to be 6x to the minus 1. Or I can write it as 6 over x. Yeah, the x to the minus 1 is written as 1 over x. Okay, it's 6 lots of 1 over x. Okay, 6 lots of 1 over x. So I get 6 over x. Okay, or 6x. Okay, this next one is a bit more trickier, so taking our time here. I do a squared divided by a, well, that would just equal to a b cubed divided by b cubed is equal to 1 c squared divided by c to the 4 that would be equal to c to the minus 2 so it's a c to the minus 2 or i can write it as a over c squared okay question number five okay simplify this well i'm going to have 26 fifths here because I, I can't actually simplify that okay because there are no common factors between the two numbers. S squared divided by S squared here goes to 1. T cubed divided by T here is going to be T squared. And then I'm going to have the U squared at the end of it. So I can write it like that. Or I can write it as 26 T squared U squared all over 5. Okay. This next one, simplify this algebraic fraction. So I'm going to divide everything top and bottom by x okay so that goes to seven on the top on the bottom the 5x goes to five dividing it by x and then dividing x squared by x just goes to yeah x okay so that is my final answer okay think of it as if i factorize the denominator okay take x out as a factor I have x lots of five subtract x I can then divide top and bottom by x, so I get 7 over 5 subtract x, okay, and that'll be my final answer. This next one, obviously, taking our time here. So, if I factor out 6t on the top, okay, I'm going to have 8 
subtract t all over 8s squared t. Okay, so we're taking our time here. I can cancel top and bottom by t. 6 divided by 8, yes, simplifies to 3 quarters. So that'll be 3 lots of 8 minus t all over 4s squared. Okay, and that would obviously be my final answer. Okay, this next one is a bit more trickier. I'm going to factorize the numerator and I'm going to factorize the denominator and then simplify where possible. So I'm going to take out 4s as a common factor. Then I'm going to have t plus 2s on the top here. So that is a t there, guys. Yeah, sorry about the line there. So that is a t all over. So factorize the t out. I'm going to have 8t brackets t plus 2s. Okay. So here, yeah, I can do a bit more, obviously, actually cancelling. So I can divide top and bottom by the t plus 2s. And then 4, 8 simplifies to 1 half. So I'm going to have s over 2t. Okay. Yeah, essentially, okay, yeah. So that is my answer for that question. So hopefully it makes sense, guys. Okay. This next one, yeah, again, taking our time. Factorise the numerator, factorise the denominator. Okay, and I'm going to take 6x as a common factor. So 6x, lots of y subtract 1. And then on the denominator, factoring out the 3, because that's the highest common factor between 3y and minus 3. So 3 lots of y subtract 1. I can now cancel top and bottom with my y minus 1. 6x divided by 3 is just equal to 2x. So your final answer simplifies to 2x here, yeah, because this obviously goes to 1, and this goes to 1. 6x times 1 is going to be 6x, all over 3 times 1, which is going to be 3, which simplifies to just 2x. Okay. This next one here is a question 10, actually a bit more tricky now. Yeah, so this one's your yeah, higher tier only. Simplify this. So I'm going to factorize the numerator and denominator here separately. So I've got a quadratic here, so it's going to be two brackets here, because I've got no common factors. Okay, so factorise the numerator, that'll be x and x. Two numbers that add to make positive 7 and times to make positive 10, that'll be 2 and 5. So positive 2 and positive 5, so x plus 2 times x plus 5. Again, I can write it in any order. Okay, on the bottom, I'm going to have x plus something and then x minus something. So taking our time here, guys. Okay, Oops, sorry about that. A little bit of a big sign there. Okay. So two numbers that add to make positive 2 and multiply to make negative 15. Well, that'll be positive 5 and negative 3. Okay. And this time here, yeah, the order does matter. Because if I expand it, I get x squared subtract 3x plus 5x, which goes to positive 2x. And then positive 5 times negative 3 is going to be negative 15. Okay. So divide top and bottom by x plus 5. So I'm left with x plus 2 on the top all over x minus 3, guys. Okay, so that's how to simplify, yeah, a quadratic, okay, algebraic fraction. Yeah, so always think of factorising if it's in this form. Okay, this next one, again, actually similar idea. So I'm going to factorise the numerator and denominator separately, so taking our time. So I'm going to have x minus 3 times x minus 4 on the top. Again, yeah, sorry that I'm doing this obviously a bit quickly, but I am trying to obviously treat it as like a revision video. Yeah, so factorising quadratics here. All over, that will be x minus 4 times x plus 2, or x plus 2 times x minus 4. Okay, the order here, yeah, obviously, yeah, does actually matter here, is in terms of signage or sign. So divide top and bottom by x minus 4. So I'm going to get x subtract 3. Sorry about my handwriting, guys. Apologies. All over x plus 2. Okay, and that is my final answer. This next one, yeah, I haven't got much space for this next one, but I'll take my time. Okay, so factorise the top. I'm going to have x lots of x plus 4. Okay, because I can take out an x here, because x is the highest common factor here in like both components. And on the bottom, I'm going to have x plus 3 times x plus 4. And then I can cancel top and bottom by x plus 4. So my final answer for this question, sorry, I'm going to see a bit quickly, guys, but hopefully, yeah, it's making sense so far. 
Yes, this is factorizing quadratics. Divide top and bottom by x plus 4. I'm going to have x over x plus 3. Okay, this next one, simplify this algebraic fraction. Again, factorize the numerator, factorize the denominator separately. The numerator, I can take 2 out as a factor. So 2 lots of x minus 8. Okay, now some of you may be asking you, like, how do I know here when it's at 1 or 2 brackets? So it just depends on, can I take out here what I call the highest common factor? So can I pull out a number and or a term? If the answer is yes, then chances are, yeah, it's a single bracket. If I can't, then it's a double bracket okay there are some exceptions here where the rule here doesn't always actually fit that okay so for example yeah like the difference of two squares which we'll come on to shortly if it's in the form x squared minus a squared let's say where a yeah is like or x squared is a square number then you have x plus a times x minus a yeah for that one okay so that's obviously called yeah the difference of two squares guys For that key now on the bottom i'm gonna have x minus one and then x minus four sorry about my handwriting guys i do apologize there so then i can divide top and bottom by the x minus four okay because that's common to both okay so i'm gonna have two over x minus one okay remember guys i can only cancel or simplify fractions okay yeah if i have like a product yeah Okay, that is common on both numerator and denominator. Okay, that's the key part. Question number 14 actually is, so simplify this algebraic fraction. So adding fractions, I'm going to have a common denominator. So if I do 4 times 5, that will give me 20. So always look for like the lowest common multiple. Okay, that's usually found by multiplying the numerators, yeah, denominators together, sorry. Okay, but yeah, it's not always the case. Okay, yeah. So it's knowing, yeah, like your times tables of the two numbers. Okay, 5 times x is going to be 5x. And then 4 times x is going to be 4x. 5x plus 4x simplifies to 9x. So I get 9x all over 20. Okay, for that one. Okay, this next one again. Okay, yeah, find the lowest common multiple. Okay, 7 times 6 here is going to be 42. Yeah, there is obviously no smaller one than that. Okay, so again, obviously cross multiply. Okay, 6 times 2b goes to 12b. And 7 times b goes to 7b. Simplify the top. Okay, I'm going to have 7b plus 12b is going to be 19b. All over 42. Okay, this next one, again, finding the highest common, lowest common multiple. That will, that will actually be 18 this time. Again, you obviously, yeah, it's obviously being careful. Okay, so times the first fraction, top and bottom, by 3. So I get 15z. Times the second fraction, top and bottom by 2, to change it into an equivalent fraction, does the 18th. That will be 8z on the top. 15z subtract 8z goes to 7z, guys. So it's going to be 7z all over 18. Okay, or 7 eighteenths z. Okay, either way is fine. Okay, last few questions now, yeah. So last three questions. Again, writing it under like a common denominator. Okay, yeah. So 5 times 3 is equal to 15. So change the fraction into 15. Okay, now I can cross multiply. Okay, so I'll have 3 lots of x minus 2. So that'll be 3x minus 6. And then I'll have 5 lots of x plus 1. So that'll be 5x plus 15. Okay, so times the first fraction. Okay, top and bottom by 3. Okay, and then times the second fraction, top and bottom by 5. Okay, collecting like terms, 3x plus 5x goes to 8x, and negative 6 plus 5, being kept as here, goes to negative 1. So my final answer is 8x minus 1 all over 5. Okay, this next one, again, actually, taking time as here. So the common denominator here actually will actually be y plus 1 times y plus 3. So, yeah, it's a bit more trickier. Okay, and again, I can do yeah, that, the cross um, cross multiplication here. Okay, this next one, y plus 1 times y plus 3. 
feet. So on the top, I'll have y plus 3 here all squared, or y plus 3 times y plus 3, okay? And then for the second fraction, times top and bottom of the second fraction by y plus 1, okay, to change it into like an equivalent fraction. So they're both out of y plus 1 times y plus 3, okay? So again, yeah, it's a bit more involved, actually, this one is a bit more trickier. Okay, I would then obviously yeah, expand the numerator here, okay, and or the denominator here. But in this case, yeah, I'll just obviously times the numerator here and leave the denominator here factorized, okay. So I'm going to have y plus 1 times y plus 3. So on the top, okay, I'm going to have y squared plus 4y plus 3 for this first one. So write that here. So y squared plus 4y plus 3 using foil for this first one. For the second one, I'm going to have y squared plus 3y plus 2. Yeah, when you expand and simplify that, actually. So sorry that I'm doing it in that one go here. But again, I'm treating it like a revision video. Okay. Collecting my like terms, I'm going to have 2y squared plus 7y plus 2. Okay, all over y plus 1 times y plus 3. Now, if you expand the bottom, actually, yeah, so yeah, if you yeah, expand the bottom, then you would have y squared plus 4y plus 3, okay? But again, in the exam, actually, yeah, just focus on just expanding yeah, the actual numerator here. So, so don't actually worry about the actual denominator here, okay? Unless it tells you otherwise, okay? But if it was me, I'll just put a little equal sign there, sorry. Okay. For that one there okay and that is my final answer okay so hopefully it makes sense okay so yeah i did some cross multiplying here so i did so i did that times that that times that all over the product of these two terms okay and then i simplified yeah, the numerator and denominator okay by yeah, using the method of foil okay so first yeah so first outer inner and then last and then obviously, I, and obviously collect like terms and simplify. So, yeah, if you expand this much here, you obviously get that one. And then if you expand this second bracket, you will get this part here. I'll put in brackets here, just to make it clear. Okay, and then I simplified here by collecting all the y's squared together, all the y's and all the numbers together. Okay, next question. So simplify this algebraic fashion here, doing a bit of timesing. Well, I times the top terms together and the bottom terms together so 1 times 3x is going to be 3x and then i'm going to have all over x plus 4 times x plus 2 okay now i can expand the denominator here, but i'm not going to actually bother okay but yeah if you want to expand the denominator you will get as follows so you will get x squared plus 6x plus 8 on the denominator here when you expand that okay then I'm, I'm just going to leave it as that yeah to make it a bit easier okay the next one, yeah, I'm dividing actually fractions here. So I use the KFC method. So you keep the first fraction the same. Okay, you flip the second um, fraction. Yeah, so find the reciprocal. So that'll be Z minus 1 all over 3Z. And then you change it to a times. Okay, hence why it's called yeah, KFC. So keep the first fraction, okay, flip the second fraction, and then change the sign to a multiplication. And again, I multiply the top terms together, or the top parts together, and then the bottom parts together. So one lot of Z minus 1 here goes to Z minus 1. Sorry about that. All over two z oh yeah, 3Z brackets 2z plus 5 okay and again i'm i'm, I'm not going to obviously bother actually expand that here but if you expand the denominator you will get as follows so you'll get um 6z squared plus 15z here yeah, on the bottom of this one here so you, you would have 7 sorry z minus 1 sorry all over 6z squared plus 15z okay so hopefully that makes sense guys okay again any questions or any queries here put it in the comment section yeah and then they are the answers here for the first four questions guys here of this worksheet okay so hopefully that makes sense okay
Right, guys, that's the end of today's video. Yeah, looking at simplifying algebraic fractions. Yeah, so higher tier, yeah, only specifically. Okay, yeah, but the first maybe two or three or four questions, yeah, may appear on the end of a foundation paper. In this case, yeah, like a paper three, but it can obviously yeah, appear on the, the end of like, like, yeah, like a foundation. Yeah, obviously, next year's paper one, paper two, and paper three. Okay, but hopefully, it makes sense. Okay, but yeah, this is mostly a higher tier stuff. Okay, grade five onwards. Okay. So thank you so much for watching. Okay, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all inside the next video. Okay, bye for now. Take care. All the best with paper three, guys. Okay, see you soon. Bye.